Hello and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I'm Jean Farish and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. We're going to start by talking about one of those topics that just seems to be hot on everybody's mind. And that is how to get the coverage that you seek in every one of your cross stitch projects. When we look at um, the coverage of floss, there are several factors that all play an important role. We almost automatically look at the number of strands we're stitching with, but that's not the only factor. You also have to consider the fabric that you're stitching on, as well as the style or the look that you want in your finished project. All three of those things together will um, help you make the right decision as far as how many strands to use on a particular fabric for a particular project. So let's take a look at those. <clears throat> let's start with what we old timers used to think of as being the standard, and that is to use two strands of floss when stitching on 14 stitches to the inch fabric. So that would apply to 14 count Aida, as well as 28 count linen or 28 count even weave stitched over two. So um, in all of our discussions here, we really need to talk about stitches per inch, which is different from threads per inch. If we're talking about Aida, they, they're the same. So when you talk about 16 count Aida, that's 16 stitches to the inch. But when you're talking about linen or even weave, it depends on whether or not you're stitching over one or over two. So uh, a 30 count um, linen stitched over two would be 15 stitches to the inch. So again, for the purposes of this discussion, we really need to look at stitches per inch. So um, the next thing is thinking about some new trends. And when I say new, I don't mean this week or even this month. They've sort of been coming for a while. And one of them is the fact that there is a hunger for stitching with finer and finer linens. There are people who routinely stitch on a 35 or 36 count linen, whether they're stitching over one or over two, and even 40 or 45 or 50 threads to the inch linen. And again, stitching over one, that would be 50 stitches to the inch. Stitched over two would be 25 stitches to the inch. And although those are kind of on the extreme end of that trend, you may be sitting at home saying, I've been stitching on fine count linens for 10 or 15 years. And I, I'm not doubting that. I'm, I'm just saying that when you're talking about a, a pastime that's hundreds of years old, something that's a trend that's been coming for the last 10 or 15 years is certainly new. So that's, that's one factor. Um, there's also the trend of stitching full count coverage pieces. Um, and many of the people who are stitching the full coverage projects are striving for what I'm going to dub a tapestry look. They don't want any of the ground cloth showing. Um, they want only the stitches to show, um, which makes me wonder sometimes why they even care what fabric they're stitching on if it isn't going to show. If the, um, I, I, that said, I can see that the color may have an impact on the overall piece. And so you may want to use more of a neutral than, say, a stark white um, when you're doing full coverage and you don't want any of your ground cloth to show. That sounds sort of contradictory, that if you don't want your ground cloth to show, then to use something like um, a medium tan. Um, but that's because if a little bit of it's going to show, then that would be better than if you had a stark white, for example. Okay, so that's another trend. And then, and then there's also um, a love of primitive looks, which goes on the other end of that um, sort of continuum. If you want to look at the continuum that over here you have people 
that are stitching a full coverage piece and they don't want any of the ground cloth showing. Over here, you have a primitive look that they want the ground cloth to show. And the, the cross stitches tend to be, for lack of a better word, skimpier. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but they're plainer, they're simpler, they, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a completely different look. And those of you who stitch the prim or primitive type designs know exactly what I'm talking about. And, and then there's the factor that we have so many more threads available now. There are silks that are kind of coming into their own. Again, they've been around for years, if not centuries, but the, the use of them in terms of the numbers of people that are using them for their projects has certainly increased. And so we're not just talking about two strands of floss. We're talking about stitching with silks. We're talking about stitching with flower thread. And some people are even stitching cross stitch with pearl cotton. And then recently I was in a cross stitch store and a cross stitcher was shop, shopping for Floche, uh, a DMC thread that um, is about one and a half strands like one and a half strands of floss would be equal to one strand of floche. So it's got a little bit more heft to it than a, your typical cross stitch thread. So all of these things together need to be considered when you're asking yourself the question, how do I need to stitch in such a way to cover the ground cloth in the way I want it to cover? So you're talking, you're looking at the fabric, you're looking at the thread, you're looking at your own preference. You're looking at the style of the piece, um, the count of the fabric, the color of the fabric. All of these things together are going to impact how your stitches look on any given project. Oh, and let's throw in over dies as well, because that's a whole nother thing. When you take a manufactured thread, whether the over dyer is starting with a DMC base or a Cosmo base or any other floss base, um, as soon as they add um, a dye to it, it can change the thickness of that thread. And so that's a, a whole nother thing as well. So looking at all these options, frankly, I could have spent a week stitching samples to demonstrate all the different ways that you can adjust your threads to your fabric to get the look that you want. I didn't have the time to do that. So um, I'm limiting myself to floss and I stitched all of my samples on either even weave or linen. When I say all my samples, I only did three. So let's take a look at those. So first I stitched on a, a bit of mystery even weave. This is either Jobelin or Lugana. I'm not really sure which. And as you can see, it's just um, an off-white. So at the top, I have stitched with a single strand of floss. And um, then in the middle, I've stitched with two strands. And at the bottom, I've stitched with three strands. So you can see that this is a look that somebody who is stitching and, and wanted a prim look would say, hey, that's exactly what I want. The middle is more like what most people stitch. And then the last one is where a person would want to have full coverage and not have any of the ground cloth showing. Now, let's, you know, as usual, I'm going to be forthright with you um, I stitched that last sample using three strands and I endeavored to keep the three strands parallel to each other throughout the stitching, both the bottom leg and the top leg. My thinking was that if I'm trying to replicate what somebody would want to do to get full coverage and no ground cloth showing, then you need to keep those three strands parallel on both legs. I see lots of comments on social media where people say, well, yeah, I do railroading, but I only do it on the top leg. And that sort of defeats the purpose. Both of those legs are creating the X and they're both having an impact on how your stitch is going to look and whether or not the ground cloth is going to show. 
Now, railroading doesn't work when you have an odd number of threads. So most people who stitch with multiple strands of floss, more than two, use a laying tool. And I, I basically just stitched using, actually using my finger as a laying tool. And by that, I mean, I was stitching in a way that I was being very careful that as I executed the stitch and pulled it through, that I could see that all three strands were lying next to each other. I mean, I visually could check that and watched it as I was pulling the stitch through to make sure that they stayed next to each other. Can we say tedious? I cannot imagine wanting to stitch an entire project with three strands of loss. It's a lot of extra work. So what's a person to do if they want that coverage, but they don't want to stitch with three strands of floss? Well, to me, the sensible thing to do would be to use a different fabric. So if this is 14 stitches to the end, what if I stitched on a fabric that was 15 or 16 stitches to the end? How different would it look? So again, on the top row, I have stitched with a single strand. And on the second row, I've stitched with two strands. And so to my eye, there's not a whole lot of difference in coverage between three strands on a 14 count and two strands on a 16 count. You get a very similar coverage without all the extra work. And then I also stitched on even a finer linen. And, uh, oh, by the way, at this point, I didn't even bother stitching with the three strands on either one of these because it just would have been impossible to pull three strands um, on these fabrics. So again, the single strand and the two strands. So what I'm sharing with you today is certainly not an exhaustive look at how to get the coverage that you want on the project that, that you're stitching. Mainly, I just want to make one major point, and that is that if you don't like the coverage, instead of increasing the number of strands you're stitching with, think about decreasing the number of stitches per inch. So by going to a slightly finer fabric and stitching with the same number of strands of floss, you'll get a very different coverage. In thinking about the situation and trying to think outside the box, I did come up with um, a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. One of them is that if you're stitching a project like a sampler and you um, want that full coverage, but you're struggling to stitch with the two strands um, for your cross stitches when you have a really full area. In other words, you've got rows and rows and rows of um, stitches without any breaks. Then think about stitching with a single strand when you've got a full area and two strands when you have something like lettering or a border. And here's another really um, thinking outside the box solution. And it came from a post that I saw from Vanna Pfeiffer. You may know her as a, the Twisted Stitcher. She has incredible YouTube videos on lots of different finishing techniques. But Vanna shared this with a fellow stitcher. She said, when I'm stitching, she, she threads her needle with a single strand. She takes the first leg of the cross stitch with a single strand, with a single stitch, and then she crosses it. So her, the top leg, she actually stitches twice. So the bottom leg has a single strand and the top leg has two strands. So again, she's threading her needle one time with a single strand and stitching the bottom leg once and the top leg twice. And she finds that that sometimes finds that little sweet spot as far as exactly the kind of coverage that she wants for that particular piece. I thought that was a really clever idea. So what's a stitcher to do? How, how, how do you approach this sort of thing? And I guess what I would say is kind of do what I did here. 
when once you've decided on your fabric um if you know that that's the fabric you want to use then um experiment with a variety of strands and decide which one that you like best the only person you're having to satisfy here is yourself so don't worry about what the standard is or what everybody else is doing do what suits you i'm not going to say i'm embarrassed by how little i have done on my america land that we love because if anybody else is exactly where i am right now i don't want them to be embarrassed um, but as you can see um, i have uh, alaska completely done and alabama get my camera set up here Alabama I have the state name done and the house but I haven't stitched the little checkerboard thing here mainly because that particular color um, I can't find an exact match from Cosmo to DMC and so I thought I would just wait and see where else that color is used elsewhere in the design that will help me um, choose that color and then I'll go back and stitch that in. But I had kind of some um, time when I was watching um, TV with my daughter and uh, it was just easier just to stitch the blocks. So I, that's, that's what I worked on. So that's what I've been, um, that's as far as I've gotten. But a couple people have asked me like, you know, how do you handle a piece of fabric this big when you're stitching in hand? And I think that what I'm going to do is make some videos as I'm going along, um, especially when I get toward the middle. I don't find as much of a challenge when I'm up here near the top. But what, what I do is I, I roll my fabric like this. So when I get ready to stitch um, this part of Arizona is next here. Um, I roll this up like this so that as I'm holding my fabric, I can hold it like this and stitch very comfortably. And sometimes when I'm stitching on the other side, I will, you know, roll it this way and actually turn the whole thing upside down so that when I roll this, and again, this is because I'm right-handed, rolling this like this, then again, I've got the excess out of the way and I can very comfortably stitch this area. And I just let the excess, um, I just have it draped on my lap. So I don't, I don't use any gadgets or anything to control the fabric as I'm stitching. Lots of people do and I, and I think some people have come up with some really clever things. I'm kind of a minimalist, I guess, when it comes to stitching in hand. I want um, to not have to have a lot of stuff with me. And um, anyway, that's that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm trying to raise my own awareness of how I do stitch because I, I think I just do it so naturally because I've done it like this for so long. I don't really give it a lot of thought, but I will be doing that going forward. Now, um, speaking of America, land that we love, this week, um, one of the members of our Facebook Stitch Along group showed a picture that she had completely finished America, land that we love. And the amazing thing is that she did it in less than a month. So let me um, introduce you to that stitcher. I had a, a, a wonderful little uh, Zoom gathering just just the two of us earlier this week and I asked her if we if I could tape it since I was uh, wanted to ask her questions about about her project and she of course gave me her permission and so um, take a look everyone who's just joining us now I want to introduce to you Karen word and hello <laughs> and I asked Karen um, to do this little quick um, meeting today because she stitched America land that we love in a month. About three weeks, because I stitched other stuff in between. So it okay. wasn't soft. 
So everyone uh, in the Stitch Along group on the Facebook group has been watching Karen's progress um, because she's done a couple of unusual things. And I wrote some questions down, questions that I have and questions I've seen that other people have um, written in comments. So, so one of the things that Karen did was each one of the blocks is cross-stitched and backstitched is cross-stitched in the same color as opposed to being different colors um, in, in my original chart. So that's one thing that's different. And other people have done that in the past. Um, so, so that's one thing. The other thing though, is just the colors. It's like you, you did your own thing. So tell us a little bit about what inspired you to do that and how that came about. Well, first of all, putting all the blocks in the same color is because I didn't want to take away from your designs because they're so beautiful. And um, I, I was just enthralled with each one, the intricacies of each little design. I was like, this is amazing that you got so much in each little square. And I didn't want to take away from that. So I thought I'll make them all the same color. So the way I picked my colors is I was getting ready to put, I was had been stitching on Sleeping Princess by Lavender and, or Marabilia, I think. And um, I love that piece of the colors. And I was going to have to put them all away and pull out a whole bunch more colors, which I dread doing. I don't like pulling colors. And mm -hmm. then the bell went off in my head. And I said, I know if it calls for a pink, I could just pull the pink out of this box instead of looking to see what it was that you had selected. Okay. So that I decided I would just use all of these colors that I already had in my box. But then I found I had to pull more colors. And then I was like, I was ended up pulling a bunch of colors anyway, because I started picking my own colors. It was like, I got to pick something else. And it was just really fun. It was just, it was joyful. I loved doing it. Well, that's, and that's I was afraid. I didn't want you to be upset. I thought, oh, I no, no, not at all. I, you know, and, and this has been mentioned uh, in my floss two episodes uh, previously. I know that there are designers out there that do kind of get annoyed um, when people change <laughs> colors, but it it doesn't bother me at all. It 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 never has and it never will. Um, to me, the the whole project is a collaboration between me, the designer, and you, the stitcher. And um, I I like it when that when there's that balance, and it's not just all me. It's also also you um working on it so yeah one of the other big differences is that you didn't do all the back stitching um and that's yeah. that's a kind of just a style thing i mean you did the back stitching that needed to be done so the image looked like it was supposed to look like um like i remember the rigging and the ship is done and things like that yeah um and i'm sure that that um cut down on your stitching time so but i i wanted to have a softer look to it yep yeah a more natural look yeah yeah so that's just uh that's just a style thing it's sort of like um i don't know i i i'm sure that there's a if i'd actually gone to art school i'd probably know the terminology but there's like an illustrator type um style um when things are outlined like that and i i i as a designer i've used very little back stitching other than america land that we love no that's not really I, true yeah, like i don't uh, really dislike back stitching to me the back stitch and here's the way i would explain it would be more like a coloring book where you fill in the colors and you get mm -hmm. to back stitching around it where if you don't it's more like watercolor yeah. or acrylic yeah yeah that, that's a good way of describing it. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that you discovered that your fabric was a little shorter oh. than, than you thought. Had you planned to do the land that we love on the bottom? I always measure. It's always a rule to measure, period. Didn't measure. I started getting down there toward the bottom and I thought, oh no, <laughs> I'm not gonna have enough room. And when I saw I had an inch and a half left, I was just so thankful and I don't care that I couldn't get that bottom on. Right. I was just so thankful. Yeah. It was like, oh. I bet, I bet. Yeah, that's that had to be. I would have passed it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, we don't want that. We don't want that. So that's so that's um, that's my main questions that I thought of. Um, and when I went back and looked at other other comments and questions that people had, um, pretty much sums it up. But I just want to thank you for picking that design and for making it so joyful for yourself um, by doing your own thing. All right, well, as I said, take care and thanks for, for spending this time with us. So I really do appreciate it. All right, thank okay. you so much. It's great to get to talk with you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I just um, found the whole experience of talking one-on-one -on -one with a with a fellow stitcher to be um, just, I don't know, it just, just really warms my heart. And she was so charming and um, I don't know, I just, I just really in, enjoyed that. I, I felt like I was sitting down and talking with a friend and, and I hope that you enjoyed it too. So I'm getting more and more comfortable with Zoom as we're going along. Although those of you who were on the October, November, it's November, Jean, um, on the November Zoom call for America Land That We Love, know that I didn't record it. I, I, the, the last two weeks, I have just had one technology challenge after another. It's just been absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm waiting to have just a normal, boring week with no bumps in the road when it comes to technology. But at any rate, I, it was it was my fail. It was not any anybody else's, and I I didn't record it, so I wasn't able to make the YouTube video. But I will make sure that that happens in December. And I think that on the participant side, you get some kind of a notice that you're entering a meeting that's being recorded. So if we're going along and nobody sees that notice, I hope somebody will let me know so I can fix it. So not blaming anybody. I mean, it was my job, but just if you guys will be on the lookout for me, then we'll try really hard not to have that happen again. So I am getting comfortable to the point where in January, I'm going to start teaching some Zoom classes. And I decided to start with what's become just about my favorite sampler. I should say my, my favorite, I don't know. Having a favorite sampler is sort of like saying you have a favorite child. And you know, we, we know that that doesn't really happen. So this is the first ampersand sampler. This was um, originally done in 1996 for Spirit of Crossage. And I have since taken out the reference of Spirit of Crossage and changed it so it simply says the work of my hands at the bottom. And other than that, it's pretty much the same. Um, so I'm going to start with this one, particularly for people who maybe have stitch a little bit on linen, but only cross stitch on linen, maybe cross stitch and back stitch. And they're ready to venture forth just a little bit more. So we're going to be doing a, a couple of really fun stitches here. This is one that's kind of, let me come in closer. Um, this square is actually the cross corner um, cushion stitch. That's one we'll be doing um, a couple of herringbone stitches and um, the fishbone stitch and a couple of satin stitches. We've got satin stitch right here and satin stitch uh, on these hearts this is going to be um again we'll start in this in january and what i'm going to do with this first class is this one is going to be stitched with flower thread rather than floss and i'll put all the details in the episode description so that you'll know the cost and the the day of the week and the time of day and um, just all, all the details will be in there. And I'm going to keep the class small because I feel like that the people that are going to be taking this class are kind of taking their first steps and going beyond the cross stitch on linen. And, um, and also just to kind of get my feet wet as far as exactly how I want to do the Zoom classes. 
I want my Zoom classes to not be any compromise whatsoever in terms of the quality of the teaching. And um, I feel like that it's going to be a good opportunity for people who can't travel either because of um, their lifestyle, their job, whatever, um, but they want to take classes. And so that to me is the, is the biggest benefit of Zoom classes. There's nothing like the one-on-one -on -one and in-person. I mean, let's, let's face it. But when you can't have that experience, then I think the Zoom classes will, will fit the bill. Many of you have probably already taken classes with, with other teachers, and there certainly are some fine examples out there. And I just hope that I can do as well as, um, as my colleagues have done. I need to acknowledge that I um, missed two weeks in a row. And um, I think some of you were maybe a little bit concerned as far as you know what was going on with that. And basically it just came down to the fact that I just bit off more than I could chew with things that were going on. And, um, and then the, those technolo technology problems kept cropping up. I, I shared one of the problems with the, my class two weeks ago the Melbourne Sampler at Stitch Point in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. I decided to kind of up my game. Uh, Yvette Stanton, who has a wonderful um, floss tube channel, really kind of made me sit up and take note that I was not teaching my left-handed stitchers as effectively as, as I could. So I went into my document to add the left-handed um, stitch diagrams as needed. And I somehow lost the document. I mean, I was absolutely heartbroken. I mean, not only did the amount of work I did up to that point was lost, but then I had to redo it. And that was one of the things that happened that just, you know, just a whole day just got sucked right down the, down the drain and kept me from um, spending that time making making another episode. And then the next Saturday, I was back over at Stitch Point teaching a beginner needlepoint class, and um, that was a lot of fun too. And um, I just came home sort of tired. Um, oh, actually that day, that was a day, <laughs> yeah, I guess I was tired because that was a day that I got home, grabbed a bite to eat, and then we had our stitch along Zoom for America Land That We Love, which I forgot to hit the record button. So um, at any rate, it was just, it was just, it was just crazy. And I just took a breath and talked to myself as if I were a friend of my own and said, you know what? It's not gonna be into the world if you don't do an episode. Yes, you'll be disappointed, meaning myself, I will be disappointed and I think some of my viewers were disappointed, but I had to take care of myself. So it's the same advice I would have given anyone else. So here we are. Um, and one last word about America Land that we love. If you're wondering if it's too late to get involved, the answer to that question is no. The chart is in my Etsy store and um, you can join the Facebook group or not. That's up to you. Uh, if you want to be a part of the Zoom gatherings, the only way to do that is to send me an email. And um, I may not respond right away, but I, I usually do, I, up, I update my data, my data um, base about once a week for America Land that we love. So don't panic if you don't get a response right away. But um, I hope that you, if you're interested, that you will join us. Um, our goal is to finish by September 11th next year. And, um, you know, it's just plenty of wiggle room to get caught up. And, you know, as you saw, I have a ways to go. So it wouldn't take much at all to get caught up with, with where I am. So that's a wrap for today. I hope that wherever you are, you stitch happy and stay safe. If you're traveling for the Thanksgiving weekend, please be careful out there. And um, I'll see you next week.